Yo, 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 people of the world, this is Neil the Anime Man. This is Babel Talk the Podcast. All right. Today episode is gonna be about the Bat. The Batman movie that's about to come out. I'm gonna let the other guys take it away from here. Hey guys, it's Oscar, your friendly neighborhood nerd, your Marvel DC and horror guy. Nelly, take it away, my man. Thanks, boys. What's going on, everybody? I'm Nelly. I'm your cosplayer of the group. Yes. It is time, ladies and gentlemen. We are drawing nearer and nearer to Robert Pattinson's time to take over the role as the Batman. Um, yes, sir. I'm really excited for this, you guys. It's really, really, really good to see a new interpretation of the Dark Knight's story being told in like a brand new light. Um, I'm loving the year two aspect that's going into it. I'm loving that the villains are getting their own, you know, shaky sort of beginning. Not quite origin story, but not quite the characters that we know them to be normally as they are. Um, we recently just got a clip from Warner Brothers basically setting a tone That's for right. the film. Um, honestly, um, you guys have seen it, right? Yes, it's um, it's going to be cool. Like you mentioned earlier, he didn't say no lines, but just the facial expression, the body movements alone already yeah. told us how it's gonna be pretty much yes. yeah pretty much the robert pattinson didn't say a, a thing through that scene he just through his emotions you could pretty much convey like the fear the urgency um the curiosity of what was going on and then of course the overall and you know compulsion to make sure that that little orphan child you know was safe from you know harm and then of course you know just the overall sheer panic that comes into a crowd when something cryptic like that, you know, happens. Like, they, you know, there was a bomb strapped to the guy's neck, you know, a, you know, handheld, like, iPhone, and then, of course, yeah. a note saying, who's the Batman? You know, in, in, in the world that we live in today, people will panic like that if the phone rings because they're automatically thinking, okay, the bomb's going to go off. Yeah, it's going to go off. So, realistically, I feel like that that was, you know, really well done. And the best part of it is everybody else is in a panic, but Bruce doesn't move. So I'm I'm liking that they're establishing the fact that Bruce, you know, is a little more inclined with his whole Batman persona. He hasn't really found the balance between, you know, the Bruce Wayne mask and then the Batman mask. You know, they're sort of one and the same person. Right. It's a personal fight. And then of course, you know, it's something that's developed later on in his career um, as a vigilante. You know, there's the persona he has is the billionaire playboy. Right. And then there's Bruce when he's at home. And then, of course, there's Bruce when he's in the in the suit. Right. You know, so, like, I'm that, excited for that. What you guys take on it so with, far? With that statement, I've only seen part of the clip. You know, when in the clip that I seen was where everybody's in the room and the lady is talking to Bruce. And you can see the, the orphan child, right, sitting down next to the lady. And you see him look back at Bruce, you know, and I felt that in that small clip, because I didn't see the whole video. That's my bad. You know, in that small clip, I saw that Bruce saw himself within that child. You know? Yeah. From that's from that small clip. And now I'm gonna take another note from what Nelly said, right? But the right. difference between the Batman and then Bruce Wayne, I feel like that what they trying to show is kind of similar to how the Green Goblin was right. in Oswald, you know how the yeah, but his but his method was so corrupt that like it's kind of the same. They playing on the same note, but they portraying right. it in two different ways. And I like and I, I kind of feel like that's like a homage to that that notion or that kind of like thinking that they doing. I think that's pretty cool. But in that small clip that I did see that. He saw himself and he knew, like, oh, it's about to go down, you know? So I can't wait for this yeah. movie to come out. I feel right. like this is taking, right. I feel like this is how the Batman movie should be. Like, in the newer, like, the newer age coming up, you know, for all the newer audience right. that, and, that's going to um, be watching about the Batman. that orphan kid, again, like, I mean, we call, um, he sees himself in that kid, or he probably thinks, oh, look, I got myself a Robin, you know, because Batman likes to see <laughs> He loves his Robins, Robin. you know. Robin. 
I need a new sidekick. Yo, you down or what? <laughs> um, I want to say that the take, the new take on the design on the Riddler is just beautiful. I like it. They make him look like a serial killer, which is actually based off the Zodiac sign. I believe Matt Reeves did talk about it. He is based on Zodiac Killer, for those who know who he was. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what type of traps he's got, got for the Cape Crusader, you know? Yes, oh, yeah, yes, yes, indeed, you know, yes, indeed. And then uh, yeah. um, on top of that, um, um, fun fact, back then, Joel Schumer, or actually more like Tom, ugh, my apologies, Tim Burton, yes, Tim Burton version of Batman was to be darker than the second one. You know, I had Robin Williams as the Riddler, Billy D. Williams as Two-Face, and then we were going to have our first Black Robin with one of the Marlon, with one of the Wayans brothers, I believe it was Marlon Wayans. Yeah, so it was going to be an interesting Robin. take. It would have been really nice to see that type of adaption, but luckily we have Nostalgia Critic and his crew who made a script and kind of gave us like a play-by-play play how it was originally supposed to go down or how it would have gone down, which came out pretty good. Yeah, and shout-out to the Nostalgia Critic team. I love their page. You know, they're funny as all get out. And also, funny enough, Billy D. Williams ended up playing uh, Two-Face in the Lego Batman movie for a short Yeah, time. he did. I remember that, yeah. yeah. But yeah, you got a good point about, you know, the fact that they're, you know, bringing us a dark Riddler because realistically, those type of Zodiac catch me if you can type of villains, you know, just really those are the most terrifying because, you know, like to this day, we're still left with murder mysteries that haven't been solved exactly. from specific killers, you know, and someone like the Riddler who, you know, kills without remorse, you know, kills with the knowledge of, you know, I'll kill everyone in the city to prove the fact that I'm smarter than you. You know, those types of guys are, you know, the narcissistic, twisted types you know, we've seen, you know, the, you know, twisted comedian side that is, you know, Jim Carrey's version of it. Right, Zimbabwe. Jim Carrey's goofy and then, so. Yeah, and then the know-it-all, um, I'm better than you, and I'll go to this length to prove it. You know, the version we've seen from, like, the Arkham games or, right. you know, from the animated series. But, you know, like, the twisted killer type, um, everybody... Um, and I believe Matt Reeves has even gone on record for saying that uh, this was his inspiration. The film Seven from the '90s with Morgan Freeman, uh, Brad Pitt, Brad, yeah, Brad Pitt, and Kevin Spacey is very much in the same you know wavelength. You know, just like I have no remorse about what I'm doing, but it is proving a point. And if people have to die for me to prove my point, you're going to be the one to figure it out, detective. If you can. Right. So I love that that's, you know, really like the main piece of, you know, the story. Just the idea that Riddler's trying to uncover a whole bunch of corruption in the city, which in essence is kind of what Bruce is trying to do. That's pretty much his mission, to make sure that corruption is dealt with, you know, injustice is dealt with. And then, of course, um, you know, the rights are wrong. And Riddler seems to be going about it in a twisted way and in a narcissistic way. And from the look uh -huh. of it in the trailer, obviously he figured out that Bruce is actually Batman. So I'm really curious to see, like, where they go with that. Like, if Selina finds out, which I doubt, or oh, yeah. if Oswald Cobblepot finds out, which all that on its own. Let me just say, shout out to the makeup team. Yes. Warner Brothers and Matt Reeves hired because it is so hard to recognize Colin Farrell as the Penguin in this film. And I'm loving that he's got that New York mobster thing going on, and he's rolling and rising in the ranks in the, you know, being the mobster that we know him to be. So I'm really excited to see that. And in terms of casting choice, that was great. Robert Pattinson was actually a pretty decent choice. Uh, you know, for all of those watching this, you know, those who've seen anything besides Twilight, you know, oh, Robert God. Pattinson is actually Twilight. got Sparkling shot. vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine um, that. He went from a sparkling vet to a dark knight. To a that dark crazy? night, yes. Um, um, but yeah, he. I, I think it was a very, very solid choice for this. Uh, the great Andy Serkis uh, playing Alfred. Uh, the gorgeous, ridiculously wacky material Zoe Kravitz yes. as Selena Kyle. Yes. And then, of yes, course, Just Paul Dick with the Riddler. Yeah, absolutely. This is It's a stacked cast. And we even have John Turturro as... Carmine Falcone, I think that's a great <laughs> little addition, you know, because yeah, like in, um, in, 
Yeah, in most movies, I've only seen him do, like, a comedy or, like, an annoying grievance. Character, yeah. So, yeah, to see him as, like, a mob boss, I would love to see where this goes, you know? He's even got and, the scar in his face from Batman Year One from Selena Kyle, so I really want to see how this is going to tie. Like, who, like, for instance, with you guys, what characters are you looking to see in the film besides these three villains? So, I want to see Hush. Hush is a character I would like to see, like, hopefully, not, you know, not in this movie, but later on in future movies, because Hush does have a grudge, not only on Batman, but Bruce Wayne. Why? Because they're legit both the same person, you know, right. and on top of that, I remember, uh, if I remember correctly, Hush, which is Thomas Elliot, was good friends with Bruce Wayne. I don't know yeah. what really happened, I think there was, like, a falling out that made him hate Bruce Wayne so much that... To a point where he legit messes up his own face to recreate Bruce Wayne's face and probably even mess up his fortune, his company. And probably see Black Mask. They really nerfed him hard in Birds of Prey, man. That was, they did him oh, yeah. Look how they doubt. massacred my boy. All <laughs> out, bro. All What's out, bro. You and already know. But honestly, I wouldn't say that that's so much as Erwin McGregor's fault, so much as it was just the direction of the film. You know, with the right direction, I think, you know, Black Mask could have been a very formidable and terrifying villain in that movie, which I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I really wish that HBO Max ends up coming up with some sort of uh, uh -huh. Batman series with Ben Affleck's Batman, you know, chronicling, you know, the time period from when he started to uh, Batman v Superman, where it shows like the 20 year period over, like, the course of time where Batman actually had, you know, stories, adventures, and, you know, crimes to solve in Gotham. You know, that could give us, like, a solid, like, you know, it, it'll give us some closure for Ben Affleck's Batman, for a better version of Jared Leto's Joker. Ooh, that um, was horrible. <laughs> which, no, no, honestly, if you've seen Jared Leto in other movies, you know that he's got the chops to play the Joker. Yeah, he yeah, I know, but just look, I don't know. Look, 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 I ain't see, I ain't see, I ain't see that many movies with that man in it. Okay, I love the Joker. Okay, I love the Joker all day, every day. He, I felt in the movie they didn't really show him that much, which I think worked for me. I was just thinking, I like Joker in a minute. If Joker in it, I'm gonna see it. I don't, give, I don't care. I'm gonna see it. Joker's in the movie. I want to see it. But we've like, seen Joker so many times. I don't care buddy. where. I don't care. You see the eyes. That's I don't care. Joker, if Joker is a cash grab just because of his label, just because of his character. But if done right, more so than just the public's eye, you know, just for in terms of storytelling um, and lore, you know, it could be done. It could be done properly, like. Like, take, for instance, Willem Dafoe. If he was cast oh. as the Joker, I can guarantee it would be something that's marked, like, high on the bar with Jack Nicholson, Mark Hamill, and all the rest. Which is funny, because this Saturday, he just recently hosted Saturday Night Live, and he acknowledged that people actually come up to him and ask him that, or, or say that he should play the Joker. So he knows all about this. Right. Which is great. Exactly. Hopefully it's something that happens in the near future before... You know, he gets too old for the role. But, I mean, like, um, just in terms of, like, story, like, take Black Mask, for instance. Like, mm -hmm. an HBO Max series could have properly given us, like, a Black Mask story where Ben Affleck's Batman takes on, you know, Ewan McGregor's Black Mask or, you know, give us, like, a Scarecrow story arc or, like, a Riddler story arc, which, in my opinion, if we continued with Ben Affleck as Batman, I think Neil Patrick Harris would make a perfect Riddler. Uh, yeah, I think I might see fan art, like fan made posters with him as um the Riddler. I think I could I think I could see it a little bit. Um he's got I, the I can tell you why I can see it. Specifically because um there's been roles where he's played a smug know it all, which is exactly what the Riddler is. If you oh, play Arkham City and Arkham Knight and listen to him, you can almost immediately see Neil Patrick Harris's face. And then, if you've seen the Matrix, uh, the new one, yeah, the the new Matrix, um, he plays the villain in that film, and his performance there very much says Riddler, in my opinion. You know, just the smug bastard who's like ten steps ahead of everybody, 
but not nearly as smart as you think he is. And that's pretty much like the core of what the Riddler is. You know, he yeah. he's smart, but proving a point is pretty much like his own hubris and like his biggest downfall. He cannot help himself with the Riddlers, uh, w- w- uh, with the Riddles taking on Batman. And at the end of the day, that's pretty much what's going to get him, you know, you know, taken down in the end. You know, exactly. I, I, yeah, like that's like the common thing amongst comic book artists. You know, that they make jokes about. Riddler has to be the most self-defeating villain in the DC universe. Self-absorbed, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Self-absorbed. So, um, Neil. Yeah. Um, Neil, other than the Joker, again, other than the Joker, what, you what other villain do you want to see there? I want to no see... Joker. Talking about no Joker. I had a <laughs> list. I wanted to see... Hmm... Um... Two Face, they want to see Two Face. Um, Black uh, Poison Ivy, I'm gonna say Black Ivy, I'm dumbass. <laughs> and um, Black Mass. Yeah. You already know why I want to see Poison boy. Ivy. You already know. Okay. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Dude, you already know. Like, there's two types of Batman films that I want to see. I want to see. Which I'll, I'll start off with <laughs> Rated R, R, yeah. <laughs> I know, of course, it's, it's got to be rated R, but here's what, here's how I would do it. See, I want to have, like, in terms of just random villains off the top of my head, Mr. Freeze, because I want to see how they oh. do, like, a realist version of Mr. Freeze. Right. And, like, a suit and all that. With Arnold. With Mad Bat. Um, and then I want to see, like, a proper version of Rachel Wolf, like the Lazarus Pit, League of Assassins, and all of that, with his own daughter, Talia mm-hmm. Wolf. Yeah. And then if we were talking about like versions of film, I would want to see like a sort of like a crime war movie where basically it's Black Mask taking on Cobblepot, taking on Carmine Falcone, taking on Sal Maroney. Like a war like for Gotham. War. Like yeah. a war for Gotham. It's not yeah. even like the big supervillains. It's just the crime lords and you Batman know, is in the middle of them. By you saying this, you know, it reminds me when I was watching... Um, it was a while back. I don't know if I'm 100% right or not, but it reminds me of um, when I was watching Daredevil. And I think it wasn't Daredevil where he... No, no, no. It wasn't Daredevil. I'm sorry. It was in Gotham. It was in Gotham where um, Kazu, um, um I've messed up his name. He had pinned certain people in the mob gang against each other. So he can rise yeah. to the top. I, I that's, yeah. that's from Gotham. That now I know what you mean. I know what you mean from Gotham. So yeah, I it definitely want to see that to take over Gotham. You know, it's just like whoever has enough power. It'd be like a mix of uh, Training Day with Gotham with a mm-hmm. uh, law-abiding citizen. If you've ever seen those, yeah, uh, yeah I think so, I remember that one. Yeah, so th- those would be like pretty much like the premise. You know, just every man for himself. It's a doggy dog world. And then Batman's pretty much in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. The second movie I would want to see is like a more or less like a horror movie, like a haunted house, where basically Batman has to try to trudge his way through Arkham Asylum to take down each inmate. Oh, I would definitely love to see that as an art. Like an that's going to be a ten-hour movie. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking the right part of that. They, they need movie. they need to make that into make like a TV movie. show or something. Forty minutes. It, it could be. It could be because if you if you watch movies like Saw or yeah. um, like any trap type movie where basically you have to try to get through different you know mazes, yeah. puzzles, like scary situations, and then of course hallucinations from like Scarecrow, and then like oh, the big cool. battle at the end having to take down the Joker. Oh, yeah, that would be like the perfect DC horror movie that they've ever done, and it would have oh. to be Rick and Star. So pretty much Arkham Asylum, like the game. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Asylum. That's what I'm saying. It would have to be about, like yeah. that. I have yeah, seen, right. you know what's so crazy about the Arkham Asylum? I never I never played it because, you know, I haven't played it. Really? But well, I would watch the gameplay, but only for the Joker okay. part. Okay. Only for the Joker okay. part. Only <laughs> for the Joker part. Because it was the most, to me, to me, I just love, at that, t- at that current time, I only care about Joker. But now, since the Batman movie coming out, I want to see the whole game play all the way through. And another note I want to say is that 
when it comes to the Riddler, I feel that in this movie, it's, I feel like how you said like, it was like the Batman and then Bruce Wayne and whatnot. But I feel like he's really going to play a lot of notes on his detective skills of like everything oh, yes. he knows. I want to see, I want to, I care more about his detective skills than the Batman. Because everybody's scared of the Batman. He comes down, he beat everybody, he put people in jail. I want to see his detective skills in the movie. Showing like how he's gonna break it down, you know. I don't, a lot of people, if anybody's seen people that's watching, if you've seen the Venom movie, right? If you remember where Carnage was locked up and his girlfriend was locked up or whatnot, no, and where his girlfriend was locked up at, Cassidy had wrote and carved on the wall, right? And he was trying to let him, trying to let Eddie know, like, look on the wall, pay attention. You know, the answer right there. He couldn't figure it out. So Venom had to take over, right. you know. So I want to see that who's going to take over. Will his detective skills take over or will he let the Batman, the Bat take over and be like, no, it, he's over here. No, listen to your gut. Listen to your detective skills. I want to see that. I want to see him break down all the riddles, you know. Yeah, he is supposed to be known like the greatest detective. So hopefully we get yeah. to see that in the play. And the films are more like a Norris, like a Nora type of film. So... For you to say we gotta see what you know what his skills are, that'll be really good to see. We want to see if he's gonna be um, doing these riddles as Bruce Wayne or as the Batman. You yeah. Know? And one other thing, a question I have about the movie is uh, I, when you guys seen the trailer, I don't know if you seen the trailer here where you know Alfred has a secret. I want to know what that secret was. What is it that he was hiding from Bruce for like so many years? You know. Right. You know, it it's has so to be involved with like the backstory of his family because in some stories within the Batman lore, the Waynes were actually involved in some really shady stuff. And like the idea was that Bruce really wants to break the cycle of shame. And like so in most stories, uh Thomas and Martha was like the grandest of grand philanthropists in Gotham compared to like the Elliots or the Cobblepots or the Falcons, you know, the richest of the rich, cream of the crop in Gotham, the Waynes were the only ones who were considered noble. And mm -hmm. then in other stories, the Waynes were considered good on the surface, but very shady. Like, the best example I can give to that is either Gotham or Joker, where Thomas turned out to be a complete and total dick, <laughs> which I thought that was an interesting take. You know, right. I yeah, want definitely... his secret to be like, where he knew, like, I feel like, Alfred have something like some very important like that would help him cope with his like the like the losing of anger. his of his anger his like losing of his family and his anger and all that. But I felt like if he would have gave him whatever that answer is to like okay it was this person are right, you kill him okay what then you wouldn't grow you know it probably would turn him to be like I want you to grow with this anger to put all these bad people that's coming out in jail. I know that's going to happen toward the future. You know what I'm saying? That have been like, all right, you yeah. got your revenge back, but now other people are losing their lives to people similar to the person that killed your mom and dad. You know, some, like, I feel like that's something to think about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, along those lines of, you know, wanting Bruce to just move on with his life, be it as Bruce or be it, you know, in a cave, which, you know, Alfred in hindsight never really wanted for Bruce at all. You know, he just, there was a healthier way to just move on with your life. But I will help you if need be. Just as long as you don't kill yourself, I don't want to see you do that to yourself. I, I want to see yeah. Alfred in the back, in the back costume, okay? I want to see, like, <laughs> like I want to see, like, if Riddler got Batman up like this, and then Alfred come out with the suit on, right? And just start <laughs> whooping some butt. You know, he'd be like, Alfred, who taught you this? I've been watching you over the years. You know? Ah, uh, yeah. That well, was, no, I, they need to make Alfred a movie on Bruce that. In some stories. So, yeah. yeah it'd be nice. I want to see nice that. <laughs> I want to see just that. Hey, but, there was your new Robin. There you go. The there you go. Robin. Oh, yeah. To a point before we, before we wrap up the show, guys, I just want to. Uh, touch on a little note that the guy said in, in the video for today. So when Oscar said um, a new Robin or whatnot, I thought that was very hilarious. 
because I saw an animated clip of where it was all different Robins, right? And then they had like it was a black Robin or whatnot. And he was like, Oh, he was like, um, he had you kill people? He had you do this, he had you do that. Oh, you learn how to snap somebody arm in like three seconds or whatever. It was super funny. I thought that was I just wanted to um, tell y'all about that. Y'all should go watch that video. I might link it Did down in the description box below. No, it was oh, something no, else. It was something else. It was something else that I seen. But you know, okay. you guys. Um, all I was thinking of in that moment was it's just like I'm the best Robin. No, I'm the best Robin. At least I'm the toughest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he snapped his arm back into place. That's crazy. <laughs> but um, you guys, this has been Babble Talk. You know, we have fun with this episode today. What um, look on, be on the lookout for episode for the next episode is gonna be a good one. It's coming out very soon. The next episode gonna be something of the night, and I'm not talking about Batman. All right, you guys, you have a good one. This has been Battle Talk. Thank you for tuning in today. All right, guys, have a good night. This is Oscar, your Marvel DC and your friendly neighborhood nerd. And, of course, I'm Nelly, your cosplayer. Thank you for joining us, guys. We'll be sure to see you next week. And tune in around March for us to actually give a proper analysis and review of the Batman when it fully comes out. Yes, for indeed. Spoiler-free and we'll, spoilers. Yeah, we'll, we'll have two versions of it. We'll have a spoiler-free review and then a regular review covering pretty much everything just in a round. So that's it for tonight, guys. Y'all take it yes, easy. Yes, indeed. Peace out. Thank you, guys.